as I was building my business, this is before it went into the Inc. 5000 and all this other stuff, <clears throat> I had read a book by Seth Godin. It's probably one of my favorite books of all time. It's definitely in the top 10. It's called Poke the Box. And in it, the whole concept that he talks about is that when you're doing anything, you want to always be creating, but you want to do it in such a way where you're having fun and you're always putting something out there. And it's called Poke the Box. Like when we are kids, we if we're if we are given something, immediately we're going to try and figure out what it does, what it is, and, and we're gonna poke at it, we're gonna open it up, we're gonna if there's like a gear, we're gonna twist the gear, we're gonna find out what it is. We're not gonna think about the all the possible failures or the possible bad outcomes that could happen. We literally just start poking the box and start doing what we want, right? We want to figure out what this thing is. But as we get older, through society, through a bunch of other pressures, we become very hesitant to try new things, to try and create and I remember I was, as I was reading that book, I also came across another video of his where he talks about shipping, shipping it. That no matter what you do, you want to ship it. And the, the objective of an artist, a creator, and everybody's an artist, the objective is to create and ship. The last video I did, I had this, I, I started rambling toward the end. It was on, it was on uh, how to communicate, how to be interesting when you're speaking with somebody else, which is ironic because I started like rambling at the end and I'm like, this is not interesting. <laughs> but uh, the, the tendency is to not ship that, to not upload it, to not put it out there. Because people, are, I'm gonna be embarrassed, people are gonna look at it and think that I'm, I mean, here I am talking about being interesting and how to stay interesting, how to have good conversations, and then at the end I'm like rambling, right? <clears throat> so it's, a, it's almost hypocritical. So the tendency is to keep that and say, you know what, I'll just redo it later. <clears throat> well, Seth says no. He says to ship it. Because you never know what will happen. Prior to that, I had a video on eye contact. And I was thinking, you know, people aren't going to really want to see this. There's so many other, there's so many other YouTubers that talk about it, and yada, yada. And it ended up being one of my best videos. And had I not shipped it, I wouldn't have seen, whoa, people were actually interested in that video. It ended up being one of my uh, better videos. All throughout my business life, there was this sense of quitting or focusing on one customer one client who was having issues or problems or or was not not issues or problems because obviously I want to solve those problems but more of this this is a problem customer and I want to prove to them that they're missing out if they don't continue with the service that I have right and so <clears throat> I would spend in the very beginning, I would spend so much time on these customers that really weren't meant to be in my life. So much time on these customers who would be better served elsewhere. 
just like as if we were in a you were in a relationship with somebody who's just not a good vibe for you or is toxic. You you have the choice of keeping them and trying to make it work or letting them go and finding someone that is a better fit for them. Often the better choice is to let them go and move on. <clears throat> When you are creating anything, when you're doing any type of business, when you're doing any type of art, you're, you're an artist, you want to continually ship. I've had so many people who asked me over the years, how do I create a successful business? And I just tell them, you just start doing things. And you start doing what you love. And they might have this awesome idea and, and they, 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 they have this, these grandiose plans. But a lot of the times, they don't actually ship. A lot of the times, they don't actually do. And it's in the doing. It's in the shipping. It's in the putting it out there into the universe that you start having success. When I started cutting out clients that were not good fits, when when I could just feel that they weren't good fits, and I just said bye-bye, two new clients, three new clients would come in, then I could ship to them better service. And out of the three new clients, maybe there was one client that wasn't that a great fit, cut another one and two, three, four, five more clients would come. <clears throat> the more that you just keep on going, the more that you keep on the path that you want to go and you continually put out there into the world what you want, the more that you're going to start getting back. <clears throat> there are so many times in the multiple podcasts that I've done, in the multiple interviews that I've done, in the in what I've bought course-wise, in uh, in what I've tried to do in my business, or even with these videos, where my 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 ego wanted to keep it from getting out there because I didn't think it was good enough. I didn't think. I was funny enough, or I rambled, or I wasn't as interesting as I could be. I didn't tell as many stories as I should have. But every time I put something out, there has been an effect in the universe. And something comes back. It might be right away, it might be in 10 months, it might be in 10 years. I've had I've had customers who became clients after listening to two or three years of my podcast, the Freedom in Five Minutes podcast that I, that I have, which I haven't, I haven't put in, in a lot in there. I've been focusing more on video. I kind of want to change things up anyway. But they had been listening to my podcast for years and then it finally became a client. I've had people on my email list for one of my businesses who were in there for years, and then all of a sudden they needed it, they needed what I had to offer, and they became clients. But had I not put it out there for them, had I not put the, had I not put that email sequence that lasts for a year and a half, two years out there, they would not have became clients. It's really, really, really difficult, especially in today's age because of how we've been taught to get, it's very difficult to get past the ego enough to where you can just create and put it out there and let somebody see what you've done. We are very much used to 
trying to be the absolute best. You want to get an A. You want to get an A plus on your test, right? If you get a B or a C or whatever, then you're not good enough. That's not good enough. In fact, it's never good enough unless you get 100% in reality. Because it's always like, gosh, I missed that one question. That sucks. Dang it. We, there is always that one, that the the the, the, the infinite dif difference of perfection and inf imperfection. If you did not get it perfect, there's still that disappointment. But when you realize and you start living in a way where you might suck at what you're doing right now, but you're still going to put it out there so that you get practice and you get better. If you look at most of my videos right now, they don't have thumbnails. They don't have fancy editing. Man, I, my elbow, something, something like that hurts. I don't know what that is. <clears throat> There's no fancy editing. There's no cuts. There's no nothing. Why would I do that? Will I get more views with a fancy thumbnail? Yes, I would. Would I get more views with and and be more palatable with with editing probably for me though my goal is to consistently put out videos my goal is to build that habit and to build the callus of responding to comments, seeing comments, positive and negative, to be able to tell stories, to be able to talk without having to edit and cut, to be able to, to speak and practice, I can do it in any way right now, but to get better at speaking without ums and ahs and other fillers to be a better storyteller, to share my experiences, to think about my experiences and share those experiences, to be more conversational in how I present these videos. Because one of the things that you don't see is when I'm not doing these videos and I'm out and about, I have many, many, many people who I'm having conversations with to help them to become better whether it's at social skills or business and so on and so forth and while I can speak in a way that is I can speak in a way that's inspiring to them one-on-one -on -one in person this is not where I would like it to be and so I ship I see what works and I see what doesn't I ship despite feeling like I rambled. I ship despite feeling like this is going to be a failure. I ship despite feeling like I'm going to make a fool out of myself. I ship despite feeling like people are going to think I'm try hard because I drive a fancy car. I ship when I know that there are people out there who simply just will not like me. I do it anyway. I do it because the more that I put it out there, the more it's going to come back in a variety of ways. It could be because one person got something out of it that it absolutely changed their life. It could be because some somebody wants to do business with one of my businesses. It could be starting up a whole new mentorship or coaching program or something like that because there are people who want that. Don't know what
what it is, I don't know what's going to come back. But I know something will come back. I used to hate doing webinars. Because I felt like I was too... You had to be too salesy. You had to be too much of a like performer, I guess you would say. And I had just prior to doing this video, I had just finished talking with somebody who almost 10 years ago was a student on one of my webinars who ended up making a lot of money because of what I was teaching on that webinar. And now we are very, very good friends. He's helped me in a variety of ways. I've helped him in a variety of ways. And we talk as friends. Really, really, really good friends. And that would not have been possible if I did not ship back in the day my webinars and automated webinars. And so you have the opportunity now you have the opportunity to put your voice, your art, out into the world. You're not going to be good in the beginning. People are not going to like it more than like more more often than not. But the more that you do it, the better you're going to be. You're going to see what works, what you enjoy, what you don't enjoy. But if you consistently put it out there. Consistently do it time after time after time after time. Something will hit. Something will hit. And you will see the fruits come back to you. And you will see something that would not have been possible if you didn't consistently ship and put it out into the world. So what is that thing? Are you willing to consistently ship despite the fact that you might not feel like it? You might feel embarrassed. You might feel like you are going to get made fun of or whatever. I promise you, if you ship and you keep on putting it out there, you will have a life 